Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm really excited to have a, uh, someone I call a friend I just met last year uh, at a retreat, Luca Cursor in Montreal, Canada. And uh, we met last year at a, at a retreat, at a business retreat, and uh, we just connected deeply, I think, um, and have stayed in touch over the course of the year. I've been watching Luca uh, continue to progress with his kettlebell um, course and his 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 training and his gym and it's just great stuff. He's just the embodiment of integrity and fitness. And to me, you know, Thank that's you. what I want to bring to people. So, Luca, thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. And um, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Start wherever you'd like. You've got an awesome story, and uh, and and I'm not going to spoil it at all. So I'll let you. Uh, go with it from here. Well, thank you so much, Mark. It's a pleasure to be here and it's a true honor for you to invite me on your show. And uh, I'll just break the ice with telling the audience uh, about myself and my story so you get a bit of a, a back end idea of where I come from. Um, I wasn't always into fitness or training. Um, I got into it uh, in my 20s. And in my 20s, I went through a lot of hardships. Actually, um, I spent some time incarcerated for a number of years. Actually, I was incarcerated for uh, seven years in the US. And uh, since I'm Canadian, you know, going or being incarcerated in the US is like, you know, you're, you're stuck in another planet or uh, obviously I was in a, a different country. So um, in a way, this was an experience for me to learn about myself and it, in a way it saved me from the path where I was headed, which was uh, the path of destruction, uh, was dealing drugs, was dealing with bad people all around, bad energy, and it's kind of spiraled out of control until it came to that point where I got arrested and I got sentenced to uh, seven years in uh, the penitentiary. Wow. So um, starting off, you know, you lose everything when you're over there. You basically, every self-image you have of yourself or every belonging is taken away and you're left with nothing but yourself, your true self. And I was uh, forced to uh, figure that out or learn about myself and um, it was a journey. Uh, it was an experience that I, I cherish to this day, um, that I always look back with fondness and that completely changed my life. And I learned to became a, become a man while I was there. I got incarcerated when I was 20, came out and I was just shy of my 28th birthday, um, came out strong, uh, ready to take on the world and live my dream. So while I was there, um, I learned about my strength, which was uh, my mind, my body, my spirit. I uh, got into Buddhism, um, studied uh, fitness, studied nutrition, uh, yoga as well, and um, I became an artist on the side. And so, a remarkable artist at that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And so I spent my time uh, working on myself and learning and discovering myself and uh, reading books, um, got into uh, literature, uh, psychology, um, fitness, so all kinds of stuff. And I just decided to not waste my time and to better myself. And just to, um, I wanted to come out to inspire other people and say, you know, it's possible to work on yourself and transform yourself. But in a way, I was lucky because I didn't have that many other responsibilities, no bills to pay, no family to take care of. I didn't really have to work very much. Um, so all the time was spent on doing me and, uh, and learning and bettering myself. So when I got out, I decided, you know, I want to become um, a fitness instructor or a strength, a strength coach, actually. And one day I want to own my own club or my own private studio. And now look where I am. This is what I have. And uh, now I'm working on my business. And the next dream is to, you know, keep it up, keep growing and uh, change lives, talk about my story with other people 
and uh, tell them that uh, anything is possible. You know, you just have to uh, want it bad enough and uh, be disciplined at the same time. Yeah, anything is possible. Now, I got to ask you, because when you, you, you mentioned this and it triggered something in me, when you got, like you said, you're stripped away of everything and you get down to your true essence. Like at 20, did you, I mean, how did you feel when you were just like left with yourself and like, like here's where I am for seven years. Um, you had to hit a low point before you, maybe you didn't, but before you turned, you know, and got so dedicated to your education. What was that mm -hmm. like? So at the beginning, it didn't happen all at once. It was very scary at first. And it took a couple of years for me to accept where I was and to just calm down. And um, I read a book. Actually, the, uh, the name of the book was called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Yeah. And this book uh, was transformational for me because he actually when he realized the power of um, being in the present moment and the way he explained it was that you could just be in the present moment and it doesn't matter where you are. You could be in prison, you could be anywhere, uh, but just be so amazed at life. And he like almost like took two years off of his life and was just sitting on a bench and meditating and just being aware constantly of the present moment. And when he told me that, I could just, you know, be walking in the yard and just be constantly aware of the present moment and how life is beautiful and uh, the potential that I have. And just constantly be aware and reminding myself of now, 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 what is happening, what is happening in the now. And you could, constantly, you could be amazed at just be, being aware of breathing yeah. And what is going around in nature and the people around you. And it just, uh, it just opens up a whole nother life rather than being in your head all the time. So if you're uh, constantly focused on what, what, what you're thinking in your brain, you're not really experience, experiencing the now, which is non-judgment. -judge, non uh, it's freedom. It's complete freedom from your thoughts, from, um, you know, uh, bad or good. You yeah. know, so there's no bad or good. There's just it's just what it is. Right. So wherever I'm at, if I if I'm in prison, it's okay because I'm here, and then you know this is what it is. So I, you, you you can't fight reality anymore. You just learn to accept reality, and that's the problem with people today is they they're constantly uh, in resistance with the way things are. They're they're uh, battling their own reality, where just they have to accept the way it is in a way and accept what they can change and what they can't. So you do have a certain power, of course, but then, you know, you can't control everything. Right. That's where I was at. Yeah, that's, that's great. I mean, that is just, uh, the beauty of now, right? I mean, it's, it, it, a lot of people talk about meditation and blissing out and like sitting on a, a mountaintop and all that. And I think that's a bunch of bullshit because I think true meditation is just what you're explaining. Like, mm -hmm. I'm okay right now. I'm not judging. I'm not in my head. I'm not in the future. I'm not in the past. And um, it's a simply intricate and intricately simple place to get. It's not mm -hmm. always, it's easy, but it, it's sure. simple, but not always easy. The thing with the, the mountaintop thing that, you know, you can meditate on a mountaintop or in a cave or whatever, um, those people don't do it for others. They do it for themselves. And it's more of like a solitude thing. And they do it uh, for their own personal journey. It's not like, okay, I'm going to go meditate on a, on a mountain and then go brag about it. But some people do that. But a lot of people that do that for real, they don't even talk about it to others. It's all personal. Yeah. So, you know, that's really what it truly is. It's a personal journey. Yeah. So let's um how'd you get into kettlebell specifically i've been at your facility last year you still at the same place yeah yeah that's right you did come to my facility yeah I remember and yeah you have, you have heavy bells there nothing i lift that heavy that's for sure but how'd you get into this specifically so i got into kettlebells while i was in prison to tell you the truth and um i started reading everything i could on the subject of training and strength training 
and building muscle and fitness. So any book I could get my hands on, any magazine I would read. And I came across this book by a guy named Pavel Tsatsulin. And the book is entitled Power to the People, which is a simple, simple book based on only two exercises, which is uh, minimalist, to say the least. Yeah. yeah. What really changed my, uh, my mindset was the in-depth or the, uh, the detail of the technique and what was happening internally rather than focusing just on the exercise itself. So he, everything is backed up by science and research. And um, he's Russian, by the way. And a lot of the, the Russian research is, a lot, is actually more advanced than um, what we have here in the West. Yeah. And they've been doing this stuff since the, the 50s, 60s, 50s and 60s. So a lot of the stuff that we're discovering now was already, uh, they already found out, they already knew about that in the 60s and the 70s, you know. And a lot of the, um, the lifting records are uh, unbroken by some of the Soviet weightlifters and uh, Russian, uh, Russian athletes um, that, they, that they trained, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, uh, everyone was using drugs at a high level uh, of athletics. You know, you, you have to use drugs, but um, it doesn't change the fact that they were uh, at a very high level and they knew what they were doing. But anyway, back to Pavel. I learned about him, about his books, and I really got hooked by uh, his philosophy of training, which is more focused, a little bit like martial arts, quality, quality over quantity, and um, uh, uh, focus, attention to detail, uh, the way that he strength trains is more uh, minimalist, like I said, and he is known for popularizing kettlebells here in the, in the West in North America. So Pavel kind of reintroduced kettlebells here to the West. And um, I got into it so much that I decided to become an instructor through his organization. And when I was reading about his books over there, uh, at the beginning, we didn't have any kettlebells uh, at the prison where I was. But I was lucky enough that um, eventually my, uh, one of my friends was working at the rec department. And he asked the rest, rec, depart, uh, rec supervisor to order kettlebells. And I got to use kettlebells in prison. Um, and that's where I started using kettlebells was in prison. Wow. And then I decided, yeah, I want to get certified when I got out. First thing, I signed up for it in Toronto and um, got certified. And the rest is history. I started following following Pavel or his teachers all over the world, all over Canada. And um, I just kept on taking the next level up, next course, next certification. And now I teach for them. Now I'm a team leader for Canada. I teach, uh, I teach for them. I have meetings with, uh, with the organization. Uh, Pavel is um, a friend. I could call him a, a friend and a mentor. We've met before. Uh, so, so yeah, it's like I'm living the dream right now. That's cool. And you just got recertified. What is the, the certification you have now through that organization? So the certification I have now is uh, there's two levels. There's strong first kettlebell level one and kettlebell level two. So to, to prepare for a certification, it takes at least uh, between six months to a year preparation. And you have to learn uh, six techniques for kettlebells. So uh, just before I get, get into that, um, I don't know if your audience knows, but there's actually two styles of kettlebell training. There's kettlebell sport, and there's a technique called kettlebell or a method called kettlebell hard style. And this is what we teach is the hard style way of training. And the hard style evolved in, um, in the 1970s in a special operation units called the Spechnaz. And they, they train kettlebells with the soldiers to complement uh, their karate-based fighting technique. So they use kettlebells in, in a complement with their fighting, which was similar to karate, and then evolved in the 80s uh, called hardstyle kettlebell. So it's um, delivering power like a, like a knockout punch, 
and you're trying to like break uh, break boards in um, in your kettlebell technique. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's very, very similar to using your uh, your focus, um, all out strength and power in the movements. Yeah, that's cool. I had no idea that there were two different styles. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. So, uh, in the level, yeah, in the, in the certification, you have to train six six exercises, and there's testing involved, and you have to qualify as an uh, with the techniques in order to be certified as an instructor. That's so it's a rigorous process. Yeah, it sounds like it. Six to six to twelve months to prepare. Yeah. Just getting those moves down. Is that what you're working on? Yeah, and also at a certain weight. Okay. So you have to get those moves down with uh, with a certain weight, depending on your uh, your weight and your age, and uh, you have to pass the technique test. And there's also um, another test that you have to do. It's called a snatch test that you have to do 100 in five minutes, which is also pretty challenging. So is it? Yeah. Yeah, I bet. Well, let me ask you a few things, because our audience definitely likes kettlebells. I do uh, some. I've had some recent coaching, thankfully, which makes a big difference. You, you gave me some pointers last year. I got another friend here who's been uh, trained. And just the, I mean, there's so many subtle nuances mm -hmm. to do it right and not yep. hurt yourself. Um, what are you seeing with, like, kettlebell Thing, you know workouts like you know in the west these days like are they are they legit are they half-assed what do you see so there's a few things going on um i see a lot of people using the kettlebells as a conditioning tool so they'll only use it for cardio or high intensity interval training which is also known as hit so people will do like long intervals like 30 seconds or a minute um but to be honest it's really what the kettlebell was not intended for. I mean, you could use it for that, of course, but the kettlebell is really intended for strength and power, um, for intensity. So in terms of intensity, there's, there's many ways you can attribute intensity, but um, the way we, uh, you, can, you can have an in, uh, external intensity, which is the weight. You have an, an internal intensity, so it's the amount of effort that you put, put out. Um, and then some people say, well, this was an intense workout. It lasted a while and I pushed myself a lot. So that could also mean intensity. But when I say intense, you want to be strong and powerful for a short duration of time, which is literally about 10 to 15 seconds. And after your strength and your power drops down. So um, when people train kettlebells, They'll do like uh, slow intervals, but they'll, they'll, they'll do like a 30 second inter interval. But you're not really training your power at that point. You're mostly training endurance. So people have to understand, um, number one, what is their objective? What are you trying to train? And what is the best way to train for it? So people want fat loss. They want to build muscle. They want to have endurance. And really power and strength is where it's at. You want to train, imagine like a sprinter not like a marathon runner, right? That's where you're gonna get the true benefits because if you, have, if you look at a, a sprinter's body, he has both qualities of being strong and he has also uh, a decent level of endurance, which is as, as opposed to a marathon runner is on the extreme end of endurance, right? So you have to ask yourself, what are you training for? What is your goal and how do I get there? That's number one you gotta ask yourself. But for most general population is you want to be stronger. You want to have more power. You want to be explosive because these are the qualities that will uh, tend to go away if you don't train them. Right. Yeah. And how long is a workout then? I mean, is, are they long in duration? Do you mix up different exercises and moves? Can you tell us a little more about like what you do or what you do sure. with clients? Sure. Well, I do different stuff all the time but i will usually stay on a program which has a focus so um i like this is a personal choice um i prefer something that is more structured which will last anywhere between six to eight weeks or sometimes even longer if you have a minimalist style program which would could just be only two exercises you can do that for at least three months six months or even a year 
uh, provided you don't like burn yourself out. So you want to be training kind of moderately every day, which you could do that. And a workout could last anywhere between 10 minutes, half hour, uh, 45 minutes, or an hour. Just depending, again, on your goal, what you have available, and um, your time, your schedule. You know, so I work with a lot of busy folks. And people have businesses, they have lives, they have families. So these type of people, they don't need a, a, a long program or a long workout. They could do uh, better with uh, maybe a short workout, but training more frequently. So you want to think in terms of more frequent training. That way, um, it's going to build your capacity. And you're going to be able to maintain that capacity and build on top of it. Because if you train once or twice a week or three times a week, it's still okay. But you're going to be, have, you're gonna have to have longer workouts, at least an hour or maybe an hour and a half. Uh, maybe even shorter between, you know, 45 minutes is good. But you're going to have to push yourself a little more if you have uh, less frequency, right? If you have more frequency, you can get away with training more moderately uh, every time. Mm -hmm. So you could have less exercises for every workout. Let's say three exercises. And you want to cover basic movement patterns rather than muscle groups. So what's the difference? Movement patterns is things you're gonna do in real life. Yeah. So yeah. pushing, pulling, squatting, carrying stuff. Uh, muscle groups is more like a bodybuilding mentality where, okay, I'm gonna work my chest or my legs or my arms. The body doesn't really work like that in real life. In real life, you're more like, okay, you gotta push that person's car, get him out of the snow, I'm gonna use all my muscles, I'm gonna use my entire body. I got to pick up my groceries. I'm going to get all my groceries in both hands and walk up the stairs. So you're not just using your arms, you're using your legs, your core, your, your shoulders, your back, your hips, you know? So that's the way you should train. It's training full body every time. Yeah, I love that. It's so true. I think that's a great, you know, the mentality carried over from Arnold, you know, that we just work muscle groups. And like you're saying, and, you know, my background is as a chiropractor and acupuncturist, and I've dealt with musculoskeletal stuff for 30 years now. So, yeah, being able to get up off the ground. I have a 72-year-old sister, and last time I saw her, I made her show me that she could do squats. And yeah. she does, and she was strong. And I was like, okay, let me see you get up off the ground because, yeah. right, that's real. You could slip and fall or you could fall somehow, and, and she was good at it. And, um, you know, she's not doing, you know, kettlebells, but – Functional movement is the key to life. So absolutely that you train for that. So, so you said um, exactly that. You said, uh, you know, you could slip and fall on the ice. I did that the other day this week. Um, it was freezing rain. I wasn't aware. I opened my door. First step, I slip, fall down the stairs on my back. Uh, and I uh, fell down the stairs. I just got up, shook it off, and moved. I was fine. <laughs> and slip and falls are kind of the worst injuries that I end up seeing. People yeah. are caught, you know, out of sorts and they get hurt and they're usually not fit in the least. And it's very cool. Like, yeah, yeah, those are some of the worst injuries I've People seen. People will kind of like slip and fall and break their hip yep. and not get back up for like six months, man. Yeah. You know, so strength training is definitely important. You want to strengthen your bones your uh, connective tissues, all your tissues, your muscle, muscle mass. So not just bodybuilding, but just hypertrophy is also important. But uh, when you hypertrophy the muscle, you could call it bodybuilding, but I like to call it armor building. Uh, because armor building, it's a different mindset because you're, you're, uh, you're building thick, thick muscle rather than bulky and big. It, instead, it's more dense, which is more of an armor. It'll protect your joints. Yeah. Uh, rather than, you know, uh, look you all puff, make you look puffy, right? Because that goes away in a couple of days after you lose the pump. Yeah. So if you build strength over long term, uh, that's going to stick around with you for forever if you keep it up. It doesn't go away very fast. But the pump is going to go away in a couple of days. You know, in 48 hours, you lose your pump or 24 hours. You go at the gym, you pump your muscle up, you stop pumping, you, you deflate. Yeah. <laughs> so true. Not, not that it's a bad thing but you know uh you could do that every once in a while get a nice pump it's it, it feels really good but uh strength training where you're focusing on contracting your muscles harder 
it's a skill. It's a learned skill. And, um, you know, that's what you want to do when your strength training is doing low reps. Uh, don't train to failure. So anywhere between one to five reps, staying really tight, contracting all your muscles in your body while you're doing a lift, like a push up or a squat or a deadlift or a chin up or whatever. You're focusing on every, every muscle in your body is contracted and you're mentally trying to focus on tensing even harder. I think I learned that from Pavel, right? He talked yeah. about that neuromuscular connection and yeah. contracting everything and getting the, the, the neuromuscular firing going. Exactly. Powerful. Yeah. Very and powerful. You said something else too, and I think this is so important and yet overlooked with a lot of people who train people is fascia, connective tissue, tendons, ligaments, because you know, when ligaments go, the joint gets sloppy and then mm -hmm. it's going to wear out. Exactly. So what, that tight contraction and those proper moves really address that. Can you tell you're us about yeah, that? You're training all the tissue, Mark. You're not just training muscle. So a heavy load will actually uh, acclimate your tendons and your ligaments over time. They'll, they'll make them stronger and more resistant. So uh, that heavy load that we're talking about, obviously not straining, not straining your tissue. So how you to how to avoid straining is don't go to your limit, don't uh, push to failure. So you always have um, gas left in the tank yeah. or like a safety net. So you don't have to push yourself to your limit when you train, but you're just focusing on tensing really hard and the load and the quality of your exercise. While, you, while you're training. And that's gonna, that's gonna strengthen everything. Your bones, your bones are gonna be uh, stick, uh, thicker and stronger. Your connective tissue are gonna be more resistant, more resilient. Uh, your muscles are gonna be thicker and stronger, more functional. Yeah, right. And that's, that's really, that's what, that's what we want. And yeah. you know, I'm, uh, I, you know you're, you're not hugely bulky, but I have a feeling you're strong as hell. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because I, I got into this in, you know, in the late 70s, Arnold, right? We were bodybuilder kind of yeah. workouts. I mean, and, but now I'm middle age and I'm strong, but I'm not huge at all. Yeah. And I don't yeah. look heavy because I don't want to hurt myself and I'd rather have functional movement. Sure. I want to ask you about, well, go ahead. Well, the thing is, you know, Arnold is still a massive inspiration for everyone, sure. uh, you know, bodybuilding is still an awesome sport but it has just turned into something different you know um i think bodybuilding is important to do uh but then you got to realize the functionality I'm, i don't want to be stuck on a machine right uh training my arms you know i'll be standing doing pull-ups or hanging from a, a bar or whatever and um that's it doing more functional work and then you look at all these guys that have been doing bodybuilding for years a lot of them are broken down they're injured yeah. Uh, look at Sly Stallone. He's like, he had so many freaking surgeries, you know, and, it, and then um, it just breaks down the joints, depending oh, yeah. how you do it. Obviously, it depends how you, how you train. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to kill yourself. But yeah. I've never had a uh, serious injury. You know, I've managed to stay injury free. That's saying something for sure. Let me ask you this, right? I'm into anti-aging or at least healthy longevity. I don't like to use that term anti-aging, but healthy longevity. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, there's certain ways to do that with diet and et cetera, et cetera. But I'm curious about the hip hinge, yep. the hip hinge, which to me is something that we have to be good at to live a long, healthy life with good movement. Can you talk to about the hip hinge a little bit? Absolutely. So, so number one, uh, the hip hinge is the most powerful human movement. Number one. And it's something that you want to train either uh, with static strength or heavy barbells or kettlebells with uh, slower strength or explosive strength, which is plyometrics, uh, kettlebell swings, um, you know, jumping, stuff like that, or doing stuff that are more explosive. So the, the hip hinge is essential as a, as a movement. So it's one of the foundational movement patterns. So you're, you know, it, and it's very explosive at the same time. So it definitely should be part of your training regimen. But not only that, but for functionality, while uh, picking something up off the floor, um, learning how to keep your back straight while using only your hips and your legs. 
So people have to learn the hip hinge, which is essential to just movement, yeah. picking stuff up repeatedly. So you think of like, okay, housewives, they're always bending down, doing laundry, picking the kids up, stuff like that. They, you know, and they experience a lot of back pain. Why? They don't know how to hip hinge. You look at construction workers or mechanics or people that have a physical job. They're always bending, they're always bending over. They got, have a lot of back issues. Why? They don't know how to, how to hip hinge properly. So not only do you know, have to learn how to hinge your hips, but you have to learn how to stabilize your back and have a solid core. Yeah. You know, and how to use your glutes at the same time. So we talked about how to engage all your muscles. So you have to learn the movement properly. And, and that starts also with your feet, how to have your feet nice and rooted down into the floor and planted, planting your feet and learning how to distribute your weight by pushing your hips back. Um, I like to use the analogy of a clock and a hip hinge. So if you're standing up straight and your head is at 12 and your feet are at six and you're facing three, you wanna be hip hinging towards about eight, eight, eight o'clock in the hip hinge. So the hinge is not like a squat. In a squat, you're like going towards six, you're like squatting straight down. But in a hinge, you feel a stretch in your hamstrings, in your glutes, and in your posterior chain, which is uh, really all using your, the muscles in your, the side of your body, your, your back, right? Even including your upper back and your lower body. So it's a very powerful movement that everyone should learn just for essential skill. So it's a, you know, and then train it at the same time. So you can use a kettlebell, a barbell for deadlifts, but uh, us at Strong First, the way we teach it is uh, with kettlebell, with the kettlebell, which is a perfect entry point into training the hip hinge for strength. And then if you have, you want, you know, you're more, um, I'd say ambitious, you want to lift a little heavier, you can learn how to do with a barbell. And what would you, what would you with a kettlebell, like do a, um, a deadlift with it of some sort yeah. or a swing? At the beginning, you would you would train the deadlift for the pattern, yeah. and once you're comfortable with the movement pattern, you start learning the swing, and you wanna you wanna practice the swing. Yeah, boy, there's just and there's so many little nuances to both those really to do them accurately, totally. to do them well. Absolutely. Well, I can see why you know we need to have this down for healthy longevity because you know what wears out in uh, in us are is our neck and our back and our hips. And um, that can debilitate you and, and, you know, like you were saying, you know, fracture a hip. And we, we see this in America all the time. Get a hip replacement, get pneumonia and die. That's sort of the pattern, especially if you're like 70 and older. So um, definitely don't want that. People can uh, avoid it. They can avoid it if they take the first step, if they're um, proactive, you know, get a trainer, get an instructor, a certified a uh, strength coach or someone that, that knows kettlebells to teach you that you can learn or go out and take a kettlebell course, something, you know, go to the gym, start with something. I agree. I, I, for me, I mean, having someone, a coach, a look at me, trainer, help me, because you can't do it all by, you can't do this move well by yourself. No way. No, no way. Unless it's your profession. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I always say, um, don't go to court to represent yourself. Get a lawyer. Yeah, right. You know, or if you know you want to fix your teeth, don't try to do it on your own. <laughs> right. I'm a chiropractor and I don't adjust myself. No, that's it, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So let's talk uh, um, in this remaining about sort of um, frequency of workout, rest days, and yeah. think about that. Cool. So, uh, you know, there's all kinds of programs out there, uh, but I prefer, uh, you know, the minimalist style program. I don't know if you ever heard of uh, Tim Ferriss before, I'm sure you have, but the four hour work week, he wrote another book called The Four Hour Body. And he's a, he's a big uh, promoter of kettlebells. Yeah, exactly. Four hour chef, I got them all. <laughs> 100%. And uh, Tim actually went through our certification. He did, a, he did the level one kettlebell certification with us. Uh -huh. And he actually interviewed Pavel um, on his podcast. And That's where I learned it. about it. Yeah. I learned about it from Tim on his podcast. It was exactly. Great so he talks about the minimum effective dose. Yeah. 
yeah. and the 80 20 principle yeah. so what is that it's basically um you're gonna get more out of doing less but doing less very well so um when you learn a movement or a, an exercise think you want to grow go in depth with that movement you want to do it uh to the utmost be utmost best of your capacity and with great quality so um take an exercise that is going to give you bang for your buck um uh, so many benefits which is one of them that i would recommend would be kettlebell swings yeah. like we talked about another one that i would recommend would be uh the turkish get up because it just works your entire body and you're basically doing you're training all the muscles in your body with one single exercise so why would you waste time doing something else in my opinion you because know? it's hard as hell to do man that's really where you need a coach it's hard as hell to do but it's so rewarding and yeah. you get so much out of it and if you dedicate your time to learning something like that and you practice it it's extremely re rewarding you're going to be strong all over your body your bones are going to be so resilient um and there's there's tons of benefits such as uh strength uh fat loss uh various types of endurance uh muscle hypertrophy and we like to say uh what the hell effects so what is what does that mean what the hell effect what do i mean by that it means that you're going to be training those exercises and suddenly you're going to do something like go run or uh I don't know, do like a tough mutter or an activity that is, doesn't really relate to kettlebells, but you're suddenly gonna have like a great performance. And this happened to me, like I was just doing kettlebells for a while and then a friend asked me, let's go run for like half an hour, but I never run and I could easily keep up even without running. So you get that, um, you get like endurance, you get, um, almost like the gift of endurance at the same time or uh very you know power and there's just so much so much to it so you know those would be a couple that i would recommend people to do that are bang for your buck yeah um, and wouldn't take long to practice you know like half an hour or you could take your time do uh like an hour workout so all this questioning about like okay how long how many times a week um what to do it really depends on each person's goal but generally i would say you want to do movement patterns so like i say uh pushing so what do you push okay push-ups those are amazing to do or presses with a kettlebell if you have shoulder mobility so if you have good shoulder mobility and you could do this which is actually rare but if you can you can do kettlebell presses or push-ups i would recommend uh, pulling, pulling movements like rows with a TRX or uh, pull-ups or chin-ups, if you can, if you have that strength. Uh, squats, so a goblet squat or any type of squat, bodyweight squat. You can also do single leg stuff like lunges. Those are amazing. Uh, hinging, hin the, the hinge, hip hinge, very important. Uh, kettlebell swings, deadlifts, you got that. And then other movement patterns, which is, we don't really talk about it, but locomotion, which is the gait pattern. Yeah. So the gait pattern, like running or walking. So how do you train that? There's a bunch of ways. Pick up a kettlebell and carry it. Just carry it for, for distance. Switch your hands, carry it like a suitcase. It's gonna train your posture, your grip, your gait. Um, another uh, exercise that trains your gait, and this one seems a little bit less obvious, which is crawling. Crawling on the floor with your knees elevated, with a flat back, yeah. it trains every single muscle in your body. And just, just amazing exercise to do. So I'm not saying to do all of them, all of them at once in one workout. I mean, you can, but you could split them up. So one day you would do like car uh, carries and then crawling. And the next day you would do like squats and presses and chin-ups and the next day you would alternate like a program a program b or if you want to have it even more minimalist you would do okay just kettlebell swings and turkish gaps every day of the week you know or three to five days a week you know take a day off whenever you feel like it you know so i like the minimalist style of 
way of training, but when you would think of in terms of frequency and what to do, what exercises, think global exercises, movement patterns that you're pushing, pulling with your upper body and with your lower body, you're squatting, hinging, or doing like some sort of one-legged lunge or something like that. And then uh, carrying like your gait, um, you know, running, sprinting, you're also awesome. Yeah, those are great. That is such great information right there. I'm thinking about shifting everything over to just kettlebells right now. You can, and, you know, body weight stuff is great. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's like, again, you know, you could have a kettlebell at your office or at your home, and you could take it with you uh, at the park. Yeah. If you know what to do, it can replace an entire gym. You don't need uh, anything else. That's what I liked about your philosophy when we met, right, is minimal effective dose, I don't have a lot of time. I still want to work out. I don't want to hurt my joints. I want to be strong and and move well. As exactly. I so um, I love that philosophy. How about diet and sleep? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm not a nutritionist or dietitian. Uh, I, I usually tell my students, I'll tell people if they're looking to lose weight or lose fat, um, that's going to happen in the kitchen. Yeah, right. Um, my ex-partner, she said, she said it best, don't eat like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, so, I mean, there's so many, uh, there's so much advice out there on diet, and you have to find what works for you. Yeah. I like um, Precision Nutrition's advice on habits. So we're all creatures of habits. And, um, you know, you could stay on a keto or low carb or whatever Twinkie diet or whatever you want to do for a period of time. But then is it sustainable? Right. So you have to find something that works for you that's sustainable over very long term. Yeah. So what works for me may not work for you. Yeah. Um, you know, some people like to eat more frequently. Some people like, OK, three meals a day. Some people like two meals a day. Some people like one meal a day. Some people fast. You know, so it, it all depends on you, your objectives, and your uh, kind of like your personality at the same time. So everyone is different. But I like to say, okay, the cleaner you eat and the uh, stronger you are, the leaner you'll become. You know, that's from uh, Josh Hillis. And Josh Hillis is actually really uh, good, good on nutrition. And he has a book out there called uh, Fat Loss Happens on Monday. Check it out if you guys haven't heard of it, but it's a great book. So that's, again, he says it. I'll say it again. Um, the cleaner you eat and the stronger you are, the leaner you will be. So I really love that, those words, and I'll tell that to my students all the time. I love that, too, and I agree so much. You know, I've been taking care of patients one-on-one for 30 years, and if it's not easy and sustainable, it doesn't last. And telling people, you know, you got to be a vegan or you got to do this or you got to do that, First, they're going to get the honeymoon result in no matter what, because they're going from eating really poor quality, eating like an asshole, to now they've changed, but they're probably eating better. But then yeah. I've seen people, and they'll lose 25, 50 pounds, and then I'll see them a year later, and they put on 75 pounds, because it exactly. wasn't ever sustainable. So that's what I teach as well. I think that's really important, and you got to figure out what that is for you by paying attention and listening and being in the now, right? Mm -hmm. How about sleep? What do you think about that? I love sleep. I can't get enough. <laughs> um, I, you know, I work a lot. I wake up early and I train. And by the time 10, 11 p.m. hits, I'm ready to hit, to hit the sack. My girlfriend wants to watch a movie and I'm already falling asleep <laughs> when the movie starts. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, uh, to be honest, sleep as much as possible. And um, that's really is going to help you build your body, in my opinion. And uh, as long as you get a good seven, eight hours, I mean, eight hours might be pushing it for some. But I mean, the sweet spot might be like seven hours for people. Yeah. Uh, six hours is a little bit not enough, not enough for me personally because I train. Yeah. And then some people would want to be like eight or nine hours because they, they're like, they, they train all the time and they're, they're like training all day or more, they're more athletic. So the trainer you, you the, the harder you train, the more you have to rest and recover and sleep. Yeah, and so, in sleep, right? When we get into REM, we get we get growth hormone release. So sleep's exactly. important. You gotta have good REM cycles. Hundred percent. Just with men with testosterone can drop 
uh, with just a few bad nights of sleep or lack of sleep can drop 10 years. So if you're 50, you know, you're now 60 with several bad <laughs> nights of sleep with your testosterone level. So, you know, that does not, you know, support longevity or fitness or strength or anything or set your libido. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. You know, it's, I understand people have busy lifestyles. Sometimes there's a lot of stress. So you have to manage that. And you know what happens one night, uh, one night I'll, I'll get once in a while, uh, like a sleepless night, it'll happen, yeah. you know, and then um, you just have to manage your stress and just be aware of what's going on and uh, learn how to deal with it properly. But don't keep it up. It's going to burn you out. Yeah. Well, listen, man, this has been so such a wealth of info. I got some great info. I've written down notes and books that you've mentioned. That's cool. <laughs> um, My so pleasure. I'll, I'll, Tell us, tell, tell us where we can find you online cool. and, and how to So connect. you can find me if you're looking for an instructor in the area or if you want to learn kettlebells even online because I provide uh, distance coaching online as well. You can find me at the instructor page on strongfirst.com. You can also find me on Facebook at uh, Luca Cursor on my profile. Send me a private message. You can. It's, be my pleasure to chat with you if you have any questions on training or whatever you can also go check out my website kettlebellclub.ca this is based out of montreal you can check out me check me out on instagram at kettlebeast and you can check out my youtube channel if you want to learn more about kettlebells tips and workouts at hardstyle kettlebell pro Right on, man. That's great. I'll make sure we put all that in print here as well so people can continue to find you. Um, well, listen, I can't thank you enough. Uh, like My I, pleasure. It's been awesome. Yeah. Your, your, your integrity as a human, your integrity as a professional uh, fitness pro is like at the top. And I, I'm grateful. I like to surround myself with that and learn more because you have so much to share with us. So thank you. I really appreciate you, Mike. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, all right. We'll see you uh, in the next video. Take care, my friend.